Song? Here. Millies? Here. Elliot? Here. Tia? Here. Whitlatch? Here. Catigliano? Here. Aguilar? Here. members of the public may comment on any item not of the chair. In order to be considered by the planning commission, testimony upon such an item must be given at the time scheduled for public hearing. At all times, please use the microphone and state your name and address. For the record, make a motion that we approve the minutes of the June 27th, 2018 meeting. A second. Song? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Saying I was absent. Catigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes, uh, through the chair, Aaron Bach, uh, the person who uh, wanted to make a statement uh, about the roads out there. Um, this doesn't necessarily reflect anything in regards to this project. She had talked to the project owner, but uh, she thought this would be the proper forum to uh, make a statement about the conditions of the roads out there. So no reason to pull it. I'll make a, uh, make a motion that we approve a categorical exemption consistent with uh, CEQA and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California, California Code Regulations, Sections 15303, <coughs> Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures and conditionally approved tentative parcel map PPM 18-011 with an exception and a, uh, and a final map waiver. Dong? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Catigliano? Yes. Aguilar? <coughs>
Make a motion we approve category exemption consistent with the California Environmental Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3 pertaining to new construction or conversion of smart structure structures and conditionally approved as departure map number PPM 18-013. Final map. I, sec I second that. Song? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Yes. Petigliano? Yes. Aguila? motion that we approve categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state safer guidelines pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations section 15315 class 15 pertaining to minor land divisions in urbanized areas and conditionally approved tentative parcel map number PPM 18-008 I'll second that motion Gong? Yes Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Petigliano? Yes. Aguilar? This project is for a third residence on a 1.09 acre parcel in the RA 12.5 zone in the hamlet of West Goshen. And this is the location and property ownership map. This project was noticed according to the law and staff has not received any comments regarding this project. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA pursuant to Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures. And the project is appropriate and compatible with this exemption because the project is the addition of one single family residence within an urbanized area. Entitlement is found in Section 15A6C regarding second units whereby additional <coughs> residences above that allowed ministerially in the RA zone shall require a final site plan be approved by the decision-making body. And I just want to make a note that when the applicant went through the initial review process, the existing zone was at that time A1, which is why we recommended a special use permit application. And since then, the West Goshen Hamlet plan was adopted by the Board of Supervisors, which now requires a final site plan, so I just tagged on the PSR to the end. The subject site is located within the hamlet development boundary of West Goshen and the land use designation is mixed use. This designation establishes areas appropriate for a planned integration of some combination of retail, office, single and multifamily residential or other compatible uses. And the mixed use areas allow for higher density and intensity development. The project is consistent with these applicable to Larry County general plan policies. This is the vicinity map. The project is located on the north side of Avenue 308 between Carolyn Street and Road 52 in West Goshen. This is the zoning map. The site is zoned RA 12.5 and the Board of Supervisors adopted the West Goshen Hamlet Plan in 2017, December. This is the aerial photo. There are two existing residences on this property. And the main residence is, can't see. All right, that's not working. So anyhow, there's two existing residences and this would be the third one. And this would be a mobile home. A closer view from Google Earth. Okay, well, the dome-like structure, this is the existing residence. Here's the second residence, a mobile home. And the proposed third would be back here, mobile home as well.
This is the site plan illustrating the location of the proposed third residence, again in the back of the lot. And the septic system would be subject to the LAMP program. And this is staff's recommendation that your commission approve the categorical exemption consistent with CEQA, additionally approve uh, special use permit number two. It's directly off of road. What road is that? Avenue 308. Avenue 308. <clears throat> Which is the one in the front? Yes. So it's going to go, st they'll drive straight back? Yes. This is the driveway. This is the first residence, second residence, back here. Oh, I didn't mention that there is a code violation on this project for an RV hooked up to utilities. So the applicant did come in and get the <coughs> proper permit. And they said that they would get a mobile home for their son. <coughs> I believe that is the <coughs> RV. It, the, it's been disconnected from utilities. Hey, do we have any limitations as to uh, whether it's to be used as a for a family member only? It is uh, their son. But it, but we're limited, can we limit it to the family and, and not that it turns into a rental? I don't think that that's a requirement in a residential zone. <coughs> in an agricultural zone, that's a stipulation, but not Probably in a right. residential zone. Any other questions about that? Uh, yeah, it just says, uh, that the uh, septic system has to be uh, it must be certified, huh? Before yes, or they can move forward to make sure it is, has the capacity. Correct. <clears throat> so all th excuse me. So all three homes are going to be on the same septic system. I don't think so, but that's up to the health <coughs> department. It would have to be analyzed, and you know if. If a new septic system needs to be put in, then that's what the health department would require. So going to the new rule for a septic system, how, how does that come into the picture? Uh, through the chair, uh, Aaron Bach, uh, planning director, Tulare County. The way it comes into the process is uh, for LAMP um, is that um, they would submit a report to environmental health and if they do use the existing <laughs> system it's just a matter of uh, if they have the requisite uh, capacity uh, and if they do then there is no real variance required um, <coughs> that will be certified um, but there, there's no variance required however if they do not have the capacity what's going to happen in the future is and maybe these people will be grandfathered in, but in the future for a new septic system, they would have to do a, a complete uh, geotechnical study to go along with it uh, to certify it. And that may require months, months of process, uh, as much as six months, because they may need a variance that would have to go back up to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. So uh, uh, this project hopefully does have the capacity within gallonage within the septic system to be able to use one one system and that's what we're telling most people at project review committee is that you know if you can get it in into your one system because in the future it's going to be a, a totally different equation yeah if you he look was on the connected you look to electrical on, wasn't it if you, yeah well if you look at the site plan on uh, page 13 of this agenda item um, that it shows the septic system and leach lines uh, towards the back. So you can see the uh, um, right there uh, between the uh, existing residence and the existing second residence back there, you can see the leach line system and the septic tank. So they, they would need to connect to that. So there's two existing tanks. Right. And I have one more question. Go back to you, the Google. 
I'm a little confused. The dome is one building, right? And then the big square building next to it is another one? It, uh, through the chair. If you read the uh, staff report, there was a use permit for a church. Yes, on I read dike. that. And uh, it had been used for residences, but uh, or residents, but it is not. Um, so it's not like we're creating a fourth residence here. The the violation is purely for the, uh, and I don't know, I do not know what function that other building is serving. But it's not residential. The this is for the third residence in the back for storage, but uh, yes, uh, we will have to stay tuned to make sure that that does not become another residential unit. In the future. I'll make a motion that we approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulations, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures, and conditionally approve special use permit, <coughs> final site plan number PSP 18-027 slash PSR. I'll second that motion. Song? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Pigliano? Yes. Aguila? Yes. Thank you. Stay tuned. Good morning, Chairman Aguilar and Commissioners. I'm April Hill, Planner 3 in County's Project Processing Division. Mirabel Enterprises, uh, doing business as Las Flores Winery, wishes to amend their special use permit, ESP 07134, and allow assemblages of people in addition to a micro winery. A temporary use permit was approved um, for some events during this year while I was processing the uh, permanent uh, special use permit. That temporary event permit authorized four events during this calendar year and no complaints were received. The property is located on the west side of Road 234, about 600 feet south of Avenue uh, 84, south of Terrabella. The site has direct access to County Maintained Road 234. Traffic would be on 12 weekends per year and would add about 150 trips on those weekends. And the existing winery generates 44 daily trips. They would arrive at non-peak hours and uh, the, the daily trips were under the 100 peak hours that would require a detailed traffic analysis. <coughs> Caltrans, uh, State Route 65 is nearby and Caltrans estimates that the estimates would have a minor impact. Zone, the site is zoned AE10, which allows a, an assemblage of people with an approved use permit. Development standards are included as conditions of approval. Modifications from these regulations may be approved by you, the Planning Commission, in individual cases. One of the minimum requirements is for the property to meet minimum acreage requirements of the AE10 zone. The parcel is eight and a half acres in size. However, the owner of an adjacent property, signed a statement giving the applicants to permission to use her property, her, the acreage of her property to provide a 10 acre site for assemblages for the purposes of um, obtaining a special use permit. It's just a requirement of the, <coughs> the uh, assemblages of people ordinance to uh. meet the minimum acreage. 
Yeah, through the chair, usually requires setbacks and buffers for the assemblage and screening for assemblages of people, so it helps them be able to establish those, those setbacks. <coughs> the site is uh, subject to the Rural Valley Lands Plan. It's outside any urban boundaries. The project will not conflict with commercial agriculture and the property owners required to sign the right to farm notice. The project is consistent with relevant elements of the general plan. The site currently contains a 2,700 square foot micro winery building that has restrooms, space for wine tasting and retail sales, barn, patio, storage container, uh, water storage tank for fire suppression, domestic water well and septic system. They plan to build a 6,000 square foot event hall and we'll be able to provide 113 parking spaces on the site with 13 on asphalt and 100 on decomposed granite. Event hours would be 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. for setup, 4 to 10 for the events and 10 to 11 for cleanup, entertainment by uh, live music or a DJ, portable toilets will be provided as needed, food to be provided by in, uh, licensed caterers, alcohol provided by naturally the applicant who has the license from the State Agri uh, Alcohol and Beverage Commission. The aerial shows the property's winery structure. Surrounding properties contain ag land and scattered rural residences. The nearest off-site residence is about 460 feet east. Assemblages requi uh, ordinance requires fencing around the perimeter of the entertainment and parking areas during events in order to prevent trespassing onto basic properties. The assemblages include amplified sound, which may is shall not be permitted between the hours of 11 p.m. and 10 a.m. Water is provided by well supplied by an off-site domestic well. Environmental health does not require a water system permit or health permit since the applicant will be holding private events only for their guests. Uh, the environmental health may require a site evaluation for a new septic system that will be engineered designed. There are two fire hydrants on the site and a 4,000 sto gallon storage tank for fire suppression. Fire department requires access that meets uh, 2016 California Fire Code for width and turnabouts. California Natural Diversity Database shows no species of concern on the site. There's no wetlands or waterways. The Environmental Planning Chief Planner has approved a categorical exemption from California Environmental Quality Act under the general rule and section 15301 pertaining to existing facilities. The project does not have the potential for causing a significant effect on the environment and therefore is not subject to CEQA. They'll add a uh, metal building that is less than the threshold of 10,000 square feet. Therefore, a categorical exemption is appropriate. A public notice was mailed to surrounding property owners and published in the Visalia Times Delta. Uh, no comments <coughs> were received. And this ends staff's report. Uh, do you have any questions for me or for the applicants? They are in the audience. RV park. Name and address, Nicholas Flores, uh, 6608 uh, Palm Tree Circle, Bakersfield, California, 93308. Um, the RV park, there's one on Deer Creek, and that's, I, I don't know, five, six miles no north of us. So you're going to have 12 events a, 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 once a, one a month, or are they all uh, in the fall? or when, when are they um, I believe it was, it, it's... Through the chair, there's no 12 a year. Well, good weather, that, yeah, that would be <laughs> concentrated in a certain part of the year, or are they all? Spring? Um, I mean, I our busiest times are fall and spring when the weather's nice. Um, but the planning on building that 6,000 square foot 
building that would give us opportunity to do things in the you know in the summer and winter months so it could go more than 12. No, i think we're capped at 12. yeah i'm looking at the aerial here is this a vineyard planted around we yeah we have probably maybe two acres of vineyards um the north east and um, south Yes, yeah. Yeah, Tempranillo, Zinfandel, um, and Cap Capsov. And excuse me, your um, says you have a liquor license. Is that for beer and wine? It's, yeah, beer and wine only. Yeah, we have the ABC license and then through the federal government, uh, through the TTB. Good question for April. Did we get any comments from the neighbor that's 400 feet away? Making brandy or not? No, just strictly wine, sparkling, red, whites. Do you get um, other grapes and process them there? Or is yes. From yes. No. And we're small. We do about 16 barrels a year, is what we crush. It's kind of nice to have another vineyard there. And, um, sure. Come on out. Might it's fun. To, might have to verify <laughs> this. To I was looking at Pete, Pete Vanderpool. He was in our wine club, actually. I saw his name up there. I was like, I got excited. Is he up here? <laughs> oh. Still that headache He's our free boss. Wine. I'm sorry? Still the headache free wine? Oh, yeah. man. Uh, well, no, that's, our <laughs> that's with no sulfites. Though. That's a tough one. We did make a sulfite free wine, it, but it was only good for about six months. And then. <laughs> There's a, there. uh, there's a winery in Carmel that we, they were pioneers in the industry of organic wine, and they guarantee you can drink as much as you want. If you get a headache, it's on the house. Oh, it must have been on the house. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, I've tried it. <laughs> it works. Right, right now it's more akin to a, a license uh, if you want to go through all the types of legal documents that can transfer between neighbors. So yes, that would potentially go away if they were to, to, to sell it. But uh, the, the only, <clears throat> and maybe at that time they come back in for a, a deviation from the zoning, but they meet all the setbacks in and of themselves. So the intent, the intent of the assemblages of people is achieved here. <clears throat> Thank you. <coughs> Too bad we can't have a field trip. <laughs> Yeah, we went and Product. saw the, the planning commission is free to do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's going to make this? Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the categorical, and I can't say that word, exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations, Section 15061BC. The general rule in section 15301 existing facilities and conditionally approved special use permit number PSP 18 020. Second that motion. Uh, <clears throat> Long? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Petigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Now, I think maybe as planning commission, it might be interesting either a, a written document or maybe a little presentation at one of our slower meetings, the differences between easements, licenses. I don't remember all the different ones because it comes up 
and uh, that was a good question. It just uh, the, to, 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 through the chair, I, uh, um, as a non-attorney, uh, I, I would leave that up to the attorney in the room if uh, he could give you a presentation on the differences between the, Aaron, the ser serve different types of servitudes running with the land. We'd be happy to, but Aaron, you're mo too modest. You are also uh, a <laughs> JD, so. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I, 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 we could do that. Um, yeah, but he, <coughs> he took the easy color route. Almost always. Almost always. Okay. Good luck. <coughs> Maybe Terrabella will turn out like Riverside. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that'd be nice. It would be nice to have an area like that for a visitor. It would be nice. Good if it had water. Well, you know, I gave him, well, you gave him, but I did the project for the winery a number of years ago, and his parents also did a permit for the micro winery. The parents have since retired and sold the property, so he said. But I think his father uh, had okay. health issues. Keeping in the family. Fine. Well, there's, there's another, I think there's another one in Terrabella. I think there is another. Yeah, there is, I think yeah. so. Uh, I, think, wine, yeah. I don't know if it's the winery think per se. There's at least three, I know of three. Oh, then see. I see, there's a wine trail down in yeah. Terrabella. <laughs> <laughs> micro breweries. Or not micro wineries, I mean, not breweries. Micro wineries. Oh, micro wineries. They're whining. <laughs> yeah, it's big. Okay, let's go on to final site plan number PSR 16-002. Your turn again. Yes, it is. Thank you, uh, Chairman Aguilar. Uh, this is to allow a third residence, another third residence on a separate site, and this is in the R2 two-family zone in Tipton. And this is the location and property ownership map for hearing notification. And this project was noticed according to the law, and staff has not received any comments regarding the project. This project is categorically exempt from CEQA, pursuant to Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures. And the use of this section is appropriate as this exemption applies to single family residences up to three in urbanized areas. Entitlement is found in section 9.7.e.35, which allows agri, whoops, pardon me, <laughs> 7.a.2.5, which allows multiple dwellings and or group houses in the R2 zone subject to approval of a site plan pursuant to the procedure set forth in section 16.2, which is the final site plan procedure. And also section 7F, which requires that a lot area per family for single family dwellings should be the same as in the R1 zone, and every two family dwelling hereafter erected or structurally altered shall have a lot area of not less than 3,000 square feet per family. Why do we have to bring this to the planning commission? Why couldn't it be a uh, like an over-the-counter approval? Well, we have over-the-counter over-the-counter approval for up to two residences, and because this is the R2 zone, they're asking for a third residence in the two-family zone. So, if I wanted to build a fourplex, as long as I had the square footage of land, wouldn't that be by right or not? <coughs> in the R3 zone, it's by right. Anything over four residences. Well, to, through the chair, we still have the site. <coughs> when we did our community plans, we wanted to make things a little bit more uh, efficient by removing the SR overlay and the uh, M overlay, mobile home overlay, most of these communities. Um, however, our um, zoning itself still requires the site plan review for R2 and R3 zones. And the, I think the rationale back in the George Finney days for this was that we could do a, a zoning check. Uh, some agencies have 
uh, development permits or zone check permits to make sure that the setbacks are met and everything else so that we get uh, paid for that process more so than you would with a straightforward building building permit and this because we no longer have site plan review is now within your jurisdiction so you get to see these <coughs> thank you <laughs> okay so the project is located in the urban development boundary of the community of Tipton and the land use designation is medium density residential and the project was found to be consistent with these general plan policies. Project size located at 766 Spencer Avenue on the northwest corner of Spencer Avenue and Callison Road is Road 120 in the community of Tipton. The existing zoning is R2, which is the two-family zone, and the parcel contains an existing <coughs> duplex. <coughs> Properties to the north, west, and south all contain uh, residences, and the property to the east is agriculture. Here's the aerial photograph of the project site. Here's the Google Earth view. And this is the existing duplex and the third residence would go to the west of the existing. Oh, the in the back, yes, that is a separate parcel. And we can go back and, I mean, they're fairly small parcels. That, yeah, I was gonna say that corner parcel looks like it's a little larger than the others. Is that, is that the case or is it just the way the road is? Well, I didn't really click on all of the parcels around there to see what their areas were. The applicant proposes an already built residence of standard construction, which will be moved onto the subject site from a separate location. Sewer and water will be provided by the Tipton CSD. The Tipton CSD does not provide, you know, will serve letters, but staff did receive a call from the Tipton CSD and a receipt from the applicant indicating that water and sewer service uh, can be provided and the hookups have been paid for. And this is the site plan, it's rather poor quality. But it will get recorded. Can you go back to the plan? So is the access gonna be the little? Well, the applicant is here, the access for the, I can't get this thing to show up on, there it is. That's going to be the access? Yes. And there's, you know, this is the access for one of the duplexes, and this is the <coughs> access for the other half. Any other questions? No. I think that's a dead tree there. Um, well, the applicant is here. When you open up the public hearing, you can ask him these questions if you wish. And uh, through the chair, the public works uh, did require asphalt uh, drive approach. So the entry would be asphalt and uh, curb gutter and associated pavement widening, uh, like most things, would be deferred. It's not, uh, you don't see that on any of the other streets necessarily in the Tipton area, but um, th that would be a requirement ultimately if the county were to build sidewalk asphalt or sidewalk gutter and any pavement widenings would be uh, required as so a it is, deferred agreement. It is the driveway is a uh, requirement to put yeah, the asphalt. asphalt is, approach is required. Is there on the other ones? Uh, as far as the approach, uh, could could be, but it looks like it's covered by quite a bit of sand. It could have been, but uh, who knows if it's still existing out there. But that, that's always one of our requirements. And as far as the uh, all-weather surface would be the other requirement for the driveway, so for fire. 
that alley all dirt or is that paved or? That to me looks like it's uh, dirt. <coughs> sure it's dirt. <laughs> All right, at this time, well, it's only the recommendation of approval. That's okay for the for the categorical exemption. <coughs> Final site plan 16 dash. I think there's any issues. Uh, I like the fact that uh, it's an R2, but the uh, duplex is still one building, and then the second building is not going to impact the looks of the, in, the any more uh, of the neighborhood. Uh, it's still going to look like two two homes on the thing. Agreed. So, yeah. So, we can close it. Well, it only improve the neighborhood. Yeah. Good improvement. guys are ready then I say I would make a motion that we approve a categorical exemption consistent with CEQA and California and state CEQA guidelines pursuant uh, to title 14 California code regulations section 15303 class 3 pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures and conditionally approve final site plan number PSP 16-002 I'll second that Gong? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Patigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. Aaron got a promotion. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, through the chair, Aaron Bach. Um, I'm not going to use my full title. Uh, <laughs> the director's report. Um, so, uh, just so the commissioners are aware, we did uh, achieve 599 projects this year, oh. calendar year, uh, mostly due to the community plans and the five projects that we generally approve with each one of those uh, separately. Um, this year we did achieve uh, some pretty, pretty lofty tasks as far as uh, within the calendar year, improving early March. And the other 21, uh, Hamlet, Legacy, and uh, updated or approved for the first time, uh, five five other community plans. Uh, the hash, I don't know if you talked about this last time, the hash project was approved by the board. Um, and uh, I think uh, that'll be a great opportunity for the county. It'll be the first, as I'm learning, the first uh, CFD done in this. Uh, community facilities district we've done in this county um, so that'll be uh, interesting as we move forward but already on its heels this the Koi gateway project is proposing generally the same thing so those are uh, <coughs> pretty pretty big things we've achieved over the, la the last calendar year um, and I do want to say that uh, <coughs> in including three rivers and uh, just for the the record uh, we did uh, get our marching orders uh, to approve that, uh, get that project up to the, the board and approved um, as early as uh, about a year ago. Um, so by December, uh, and that, that, that came uh, not only from the board member, but from the community itself. So w within, within six months of that, we had a product that we were able to put on the street as of December. And it only took us another six months to respond to every one of the comments that were made. Um, Three Rivers is a, uh, and I do want to give Hector and Dave Bryan a lot of kudos for making that happen because the turnaround times were, I mean, you have Hash going at the same time <coughs> and you have Goshen going at the same time and you had Early Mark all going at the same time as that project has gone through the process. So. 
Uh, again, kudos to Dave Bryant and Hector Guerra for, for getting that done and all the staff members, Jessica Willis, Susan Simon, uh, Tim Bailey, and anybody else who, who worked on that project to get that done. I, I think uh, over the long term, uh, <clears throat> I always get the question from Mike Washam, why don't we have more uh, unique goals or policies for each one of these communities. And we always fall back to our general plan that says we need vertical and horizontal consistency. If we, when we legislate as a um, governing board, uh, our, our powers are pretty significant. Um, and you would be hard pressed to challenge us on when we legislate. When we are doing the general plan, I mean, that's akin to the constitutionality of this county. So, um, <clears throat> but one of the things that we could fall down on is horizontal and vertical consistency. So we try to make all of our community plans the same. In fact, our general plan policy is that they be identical unless there's a uh, outstanding reason to do otherwise, in which we did with the Three Rivers Community Plan. Um, there are unique policies and guidelines in that project that you will not see anywhere else in this county. So it was uh, uh, quite a great effort to, to get it where it was at. And I, I do applaud staff for being able to achieve that. Um, I, I myself spent countless hours rewriting and writing and rewriting that plan. And I worked on it for over three years. So from the time I, we, we started writing, writing it. Um, so it was uh, quite a significant effort. Um, <clears throat> so I did want to also, uh, State, we are looking to do a workshop for the uh, Sequoia Gateway project. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, again, doing lots of first things. Um, I think it would be a great opportunity to get the um, uh, APAC together to, um, not APAC, uh, the ALA together to look at that too, as far as a workshop. So we, we understand what, what it is and what it is not. Uh, moving forward. Um, with that, I would like to say we are still continuing to work on uh, three new community plans in Ivanhoe, Poplar, and uh, uh, the big dog, Cutler Rossi. And uh, we, the first meeting I held out there going on about two years ago for Complete Streets, there was uh, 80 people. And so we look forward to uh, uh, a lot, a lot of comments. The, I think we've learned our process to such a high level now that we can actually go out with a product and get feedback versus working through the product with the, the community. Um, and so kind of, I, I'm just, yeah, just g guessing close to yeah. 22,000. But like uh, all of our, with, with all of our. Uh, as I was talking to somebody about uh, Department of Finance statistics yesterday, uh, the accuracy is, you know, standard deviations up to 40%. So <laughs> uh, the uh, actualities of the densities of the households is always higher, but the actual house count I'm finding in this county is pretty low uh, from, from their statistics. So uh, <clears throat> I can't wait to the next census to, to get a better idea, but. Um, well, it, census years, I think they get a pretty good, decent count, but the American survey uh, estimates after that sometimes even contradict the census itself. So <coughs> it's interesting, especially the more rural you get, the, the farther uh, inaccurate uh, they are. But <coughs> it's, uh, again, uh, these community plans are to help get grants and uh, no matter what, uh, for the most part, they're severely disadvantaged communities. So with a higher population and disadvantaged, there'll be more, it'll be easier to get, get grants, uh, especially for uh, Cutler Rossi. Um, that's all I have, unless you have anything else. Yeah, uh, Hector Garrett, Chief Environmental Planner. Uh, you heard him announce it, it's his full title, but I would like to say Aaron Bach is the planning director now. So kudos to him, he's, I think he's earned it. He's worked exceptionally hard. He works hours that people don't know of because it's almost like I've, I've left at 6.30, he's still there. I come in at 7.30, he's still there. It's like, did you even go home and change? <laughs> you know, so he, he works very hard and, and he relies on a lot of accuracy. He's, he's very good at what he does. 
as uh, Matt pointed out, he does have a JD, and I rely on him to be my 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 first CEQA attorney field. You know, it's kind of like, what about this and what about that? And he has immense knowledge of CEQA case law. It's <coughs> very very useful. Made my job heck of a lot easier. And you know, I I, I confided him regarding these projects <coughs> that we're working on, and he gives him some really clear and great advice and and. And he's accurate. He's right. So I, I like that. You know, that's that. Uh, I trained him well. He was my planner <laughs> for. <laughs> but he does good work. You know, regarding the plans that we've put out, you know, you don't see the stuff that goes behind the scenes, and you shouldn't <coughs> have to. But you know, we just don't work on planning-related projects. We work on public works, great ben public benefits projects, bunch of bridges going up out there that we do a lot of work with. Or they have a consultant <coughs> that I had to provide oversight for a large environmental project. One that's coming up, a community meeting is being planned for the three in the Three Rivers area for uh, the Mineral King Bridges, everybody calls it. You know, so that thing is going forward, and Caltrans is paying for all of it. A lot of money, seven, eight million dollars, 100 financed by Caltrans. Not a penny is going to be uh, taken from the community. And the, the, the bottom line alternative for that thing, it's going to be uh, basically a restoration project. They're going to keep it the way it is. You know, so that's a lot of options were looked at, so the one they're going to say is, Retrofit it, restore it, keep it nice the way it is. So that that community meeting is coming up. We did. Uh, uh, we're having a uh, <coughs> scoping meeting today for the Springville Dollar General store. You know, we've gotten some feedback from the community. Some are not too thrilled by it, and but that's okay because we're going to go through the secret process. Now it's been elevated to environmental impact report. So that means again, as I've told everybody, I need facts. You know, I, I need substantiation. I need impacts, I need studies, you give me the stuff, we're going to look at it, we're going to weigh it because we have consultants working on the science behind it. Yeah, I know some people are not thrilled by it and, and that's okay, you know, I, I love their opinions because they bring up some good arguments, they bring up some good points and we don't wave them off. You know, we look at them, it's like, okay, sometimes they don't know it's, that's been addressed here, sometimes they don't know some stuff is by right, sometimes they don't know other agencies like the Valley Air District or Caltrans or the Water Board or whomever is going to look at that too and that's okay because we educate them. So I think, you know, using their <coughs> director, they couldn't pick a better person to do it and lead us. I'm excited by that prospect. So, you know, the commission here has made some really good decisions and some of them may, uh, you may not agree on, on, on all the projects that come forward, you know, but we got to keep moving forward and, and you folks are doing a, a great job, great job. So thank you so much for, for listening to us, you know, and, and, and giving us that opportunity to tell you what we feel are the facts and then you weigh that and like, I've heard this say many times by the commissioners, we are your peers when you talk to members of the audience, and you are. You know, you represent that, that, that peer voice. And then it goes up <coughs> to the political level, of course, to the board where occasions they have to make the final decision. So I, I thank you for your patience and, and your diligence. Looking forward to working to a new year. Aaron pressed so hard to get 600 projects, but we couldn't quite get there. So it was, it's exciting times for us too. Thank you. Make one of these retroactive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed the vote on the marijuana ordinance. Uh, I'd just like to go on record saying that I agree with it. Uh, it's too late to change the vote. But where is it now with the board? With the uh, yes, uh, we, we are planning to go to the board on the uh, 24th um, to give a presentation, and uh, that it'll be as uh, it was presented to the planning commission, basically with. No recommendation, but uh, they'll they'll take the facts uh, decision accordingly. Was there to, to make anyway, right? Yeah, correct. And yeah. Uh, I, so there goes with the recommendation. Uh, uh, it, it, we we we're, we're going through the process, and so uh, a, a rezone requires first going to the planning commission. So it, it's where it, where it needs to be right now. And yeah. just to make sure, sure with that, no nobody came up and offered testimony in favor or in opposition it's the maybe they're familiar with the process and know that the board has ultimate decision because of the change words of the recommendation then they have to take the final action but there was no one in forward on just a few projects that I'd like to mention uh, one is we do have the avenue one two two safety improvement project that um, Bidding, so uh, <coughs> provide safety improvements along the uh, 152 corridor between Sega and Manhattan and the city uh, portable assistance. Uh, that was a 
that fund, that's going to be federally, fully federally funded. Um, and uh, that would, that corridor was identified as, as a uh, high risk corridor. So uh, there's going to be a lot of maintenance, uh, et cetera. Another project is that, that where they did the roundabout at? Is that, or is that the one? Is that the, the one over from the south side of Tipton? No, that's 144. Oh, yeah, that's 144. That's Avenue 144. That's a roundabout. Yeah, that's. Is this, yeah, so Avenue 142 uh, cuts through like the heart of Tipton, and it goes over the Phoebe River to the Phoebe Corridor. The real, real wide one. The real, it's wide. Well, it's the next, it's the next Yeah, one. it's the next one over. Yeah. It's not as highly traveled. Oh, it's highly traveled. Hi, so, so the not the as many trucks. 144 has all the Walmart trucks, right? It might yes. Be yes. So, yes, it is. So for the Avenue 144, we did have, uh, we do have one. Uh, I, I need to check on the stats, but we, we do have the Avenue 144 rehabilitate, uh, rehab project, which was part of the Farm and Market Program project. We also have, uh, as far as the 144, for the next round of SB1 project, uh, the next stretch of uh, 144 will be overlaid or rehabbed as well. So what's the length of that? Uh, what's that? Just the length of the 144? Isn't it rather long? That is rather long. I don't know on the top of my head, but I know that the first project was, I think, at uh, from State Route. I don't know on the top of my head, but I can provide the number next time. But it's a pretty long stretch. And we know that uh, it is a key uh, farmer market route uh, identified by PCAT. So that is one of the uh, our high priority uh, routes. But that's going to be tough. That's, um, the first one was covered under the farm and market program, which was fully paid by Measure R. And the second component, uh, which will be our second round of SB1 project, will be covered by SB110. So that, that takes care of 144. But the Avenue 152 one is federally funded, and it's really to improve the uh, safety of features along that corridor. And Caltrans is also uh, making, uh, I think they have a environmental a draft environmental document on that Tipton Bridge. I don't know if you know that, or where that one is. No. <laughs> but Tipton, uh, so in Tipton, there's a bridge there, and, uh, and, and I believe uh, Caltrans identified that that's a, I think they're going to do some safety improvements on that bridge as well. Really narrow. It's really narrow. And so uh, they're doing some studies right now to, to, uh, to uh, I think the end goal is to make it wider and safer. And that along with our, our project uh, so, and City Portable, I believe we're going to, there's a bridge over the Phoebe River on Avenue 152. Uh, I believe we received funding for that as well. So we'll be, oh, yeah. uh, I believe it's, I don't know if it's gonna be a four lane bridge or, or a two lane bridge, but then I know that definitely it's uh, narrow as well. And so it's, there's gonna be a lot of work on, on that corridor. What's that big bridge down over there? Bridge? That's way over there by Porterville, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's on the west side of Porterville and I don't believe, uh, I'm pretty, I don't know if anything's been done lately, but I know for sure that there's definitely be a rehab, so, uh, rehab or replacement, but I, I don't know where it's at right now. I think it's a four-lane bridge. It's a four-lane bridge? Are there, um, you were saying farm to fork monies, you know. Farm to market? I mean, farm to market. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, west of the 99 on 144, mm -hmm. that is definitely a main route to the prison. So are there funds available like state funds because those those vans i mean that is very because that's all the employees that's the way they go to work it's huge i mean they're in the mornings like about you know five in the morning six i don't know when that shift changes but it's you know, that would be interesting i don't know uh, but i do know that uh definitely that segment uh will be taken care of by um either measure r sb1 some so it's it's involved in it's, that it's they know somehow, that i don't know how it would, uh, that would part but I do know that that we definitely have eyes on that corridor, so we are taking. They did. They improved the bridge structure there from the railroad track all the way to the city. Yes, but it's going to go all the way down, That's right? right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's going to continue on. Yeah, the, it, and they've mm -hmm. done a great job. It's really, it's good. Yeah. Quick too. It is fast. Yeah, it's that's going our goal. Fast. Our, our goal is to uh, to really get, get out there and get it done, and uh, try not to waste too much public funds because we really want to make sure we make efficient use of of funds. The, the only other project I'd like to talk about would be the D129 Sand Creek project that's northeast of uh, Color Rosie. So that one too will be construction. Uh, I believe it's going to be 
like to say uh, all or beginning of the new year, but I, I don't know for, for, uh, for certain right now, but uh, definitely by the next time I'll actually give you a uh, better update on the dates. But there are, we have a lot of projects that are moving, but right now we are closing up or finalizing our first round of SD1 projects. And so right now we are working on plans for the second round of SD1 projects. So everything's moving and we have a lot of, a lot of projects. Um, the last note is we are working, the last time I mentioned we're working on uh, federal funds for uh, the active transportation program. Uh, I, I tell you that the total cost of projects we're applying for, which equates to about $22 million worth of projects. It's, I would like to, uh, it would be nice to get them all, but uh, even if we get a few, uh, just to help out the, the community, it would uh, be great. And we do have a very strong team this year, and we also have uh, the planners that are assisting this year as well. So we do have a great team, and hopefully we get funds for, for uh, a few projects. We got funds from the feds for uh, tree, uh, tree removal, correct? For, for what? For tree removal up in the mountains. I, I just saw something, Tulare County. Some federal agency gave us, I don't know how many million, three, four, I don't know, 30 million? I don't know what it was. For, for tree removal of the dead trees. Um, Eric Collins. Nancy Woods. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy Woods. Woods. Yeah, I know that uh, Nancy, Nancy Woods and Eric Coyne, they were working on a, a grant with uh, Cal Fire. I believe that's their grant, but I'm not sure of it. Oh, the they said the funds were, ac were coming. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll look into that and I'll, yeah. I'll definitely provide a, an update. Yeah. That'd be a good one. I know it's Betty Drive. They de demolished the old bridge. Half the bridge is functioning. They seem to be right on target. Is that true? Betty, yeah. Dri Betty Drive's, uh, if you, you look, it's open, the overpass. So it's, uh, it's yeah, I was telling you July. Um, and they'll definitely be on to November to, to clean that up. The more important question we got was what are we doing about 64? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're moving pretty quickly to uh, address all of the, the design requirements uh, to get, get that into construction as soon as, as, soon as possible as well. Um, so. That's the one you're going to remove? Well, 64 is the, uh, from 198 into to Goshen, uh, going north-south. So that's the other access route. And it will be much more used in the, the future. Uh, but right now it's uh, in pretty in pretty bad condition. Yeah, you said uh, what was it? Sherrick might be one of the worst roads. No, no. <laughs> and this is one of those instances where an EIR has act played a uh, an influential role in that when the Papich uh, asphalt batch plant was first approved, uh, that road 64 was not in great shape. Still, is not in great shape and uh, b meets minimal standards. Well they were going to generate about 77% of the traffic on it. And it's not just regular traffic, it's truck traffic. That's a lot. Those things beat up roads really, really bad. So knowing that their impact was going to be, you know, X number, <laughs> the nexus was establishing that because of your trucks, the volume, the weight, the speed, everything, you got to pay for 77% of that road. And they were like, okay. So that is awesome because, you know, we were able to demonstrate using our SQL document and the reality of it is, they're going to beat up that road. <coughs> so that road, uh, other funding is going to come, I believe, from TCAG or wherever it may come from. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe that will be their in-time match. Yeah, it's, uh, that it's, could be their in-time. Yeah, you yeah. had uh, Jeff Rash and CMI yeah. in here for doing a use permit. Yeah. It's CMI now, and they don't, they don't do construction. Yeah. They just provide the aggregate. But they are, uh, <coughs> as soon as the 64 hook ramps go down, they've paid uh, upwards of 300000 in installments today, but as soon as those go down, they thousand to to pay off the nexus fees for mitigation fees. And then Betty Drive is uh, all, the bridge is half open. <laughs> the other half they're still working on, but it's it. And if you I didn't know if you noticed that it was so subtle. I didn't hear an announcement on it, but they knocked down the old Betty Drive overcrossing because I see it every day when I come into work and. One day half the bridge is gone, <laughs> and the next day the other half is gone. Like, wow, we tore that down really, really quickly. So it, 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 they're getting there, they're inching forward. Yeah, we're already seeing projects uh, move forward in, in Goshen. Oh, I, I think you're gonna see, I think Goshen's gonna be the place to stop on the 99. When it Mike Washam gave his economic development presentation to the board. Uh, there was one final slide, and uh, right, right now there's, uh, 
Uh, I, uh, I gotta be careful here. Um, <laughs> there's uh, uh, retail, um, fast food uh, center going on uh, just north of uh, Lucky's project where the old Yamaha was. So it's, it's gonna happen. That's exciting I, for our community. It really is because you know people think Goshen is Visalia. I, you know, when you're driving through, they they think it all extends. It almost does extend now, and it's that's great for for the community. Yeah, it'll be it'll be exciting. So, Aaron, do you have a, a new uh, position? Uh, no one's there to, to announce it or anything. Well, I think Hector. I just did. Yeah, I count. Just it. <laughs> <laughs> new title. It's, uh, let's see, what do we write down here? Interim Assistant Director, Economic Development and Planning. So, Planning Director. Oh. Well, Mike can announce me. Mike can announce oh. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to announce Aaron Bach as the Interim <laughs> <laughs> Assistant Director of RMA for Planning and Econo Economic Development and Planning Branch. So, uh, it's well deserved. Uh, he's he's taken control of, of the department and, and he's going forward. I've I'm still going to keep my eyes on this, but uh, on the planning commission and all the activities going forward, and it's going to be a gradual transition as we do, do implement this, but uh, I'm being called to other places, so it's harder to focus on, on certain aspects, like I was just in another meeting here, and uh, so it's well-deserved, and uh, we go forward from here. assistant director, told me to refill the economic person, and then I went to associate director, and then until now we didn't fill the, the assistant director position, so. I just gave you three jobs. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll still be doing the chief job, so. Uh, yeah, and, and that's fine. Three paychecks, sir, it's okay. Yeah. Well, it's just the way things are, it's just the way things are nowadays. We do more with less. You, know, you guys so. are doing a great job. I mean, I've been in planning commissioner for 20 years, and compared to when I first came and the backlog of things going back 100 years, maybe not 100 years, but close, uh, you seem to be all on the same page. You know, you use the it, word I'm not familiar with backlog. Can you define what yeah. the backlog is? <laughs> we don't see that. The numbers are all very close to the projects we have. And so uh, <clears throat> from the community, that's where I hear it, that people are very uh, satisfied with uh, the job you're doing, the information you give out. So. And we used to hear it when it was the other way. Right. Well, and you could even see it. Like, uh, Neil Zerling and Fred Weber are sitting here with smiles and shaking hands, and then they're out of here, you know, half an hour later. So, yeah, just with our clientele throughout the county, we, we it's rare that we get uh, complaints anymore uh, coming down from the, the board. So that's why we'll have economic development in the county. And, uh, I, I, I just, I'm assuming you're at the director's report or final or, yeah, or no, whatever. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done with that. But I did give them the uh, heads up on your economic development presentation about Goshen, uh, the projects. Oh, the projects in Goshen? Okay, great. And I, just a couple of things. I just touched base on bu uh, building permits and activities kind of to look forward uh, as we close fiscal year 17-18. Uh, building permits w we issued last year were 3,874, which is down about 5% from the previous year. And our construction valuation was $197.5 million. And that was down about 12% from uh, last year. But most of that can be attributed to the reduction in solar residential permits, which are down almost 28%. So, I, and I've been saying this for the last year and a half or so, that at some point the saturation is going to go and that's going to start to slow. Because that's really what's driving the last few years. Uh, a very large percentage of our permits were that. And that doesn't get to assessed value for property tax anyway until the value is in a resale of a house because up to then you can't reassess the property. So there's, there's no uh, assessed value increase on a solar project until the house sells. But our commercial and ag um, permits continue to be up year over year. Uh, and I, I, you touched on Valley Children's coming forward. Okay, so Valley Children's, the the gateway. I the quite suggest gateway. we're going to do a workshop. Okay. Here, but yes, please. And that, well, that that we should be releasing the the draft environmental document by the end of this month. 
um, and then, then try to get to the board for final approval. We'll have the workshop in that period of time and get to the board for final approval in November for that, uh, uh, the Sequoia Gateway, which includes the Valley Children's. And then you mentioned 99 and Betty Drive, the, 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 um, the project there, that looks very positive going forward, and we're trying to save, right currently on that site is um, Kernan, um, Kerman uh, Mobile Homes, and we're trying to find another location so they're not losing out. Uh, so we're still in, in Goshen or that general area to be able to keep them uh, as they need to vacate the site to, to allow the building of the new project. Uh, Premier Trailers, which is in Goshen, they, they have a sandblast, they, they, they manufacture trailers and, and whatnot, and, it's, and they've really outgrown their size, and they've become a, a little bit of an impact to the, the surrounding properties. They purchased property down in Goshen, or in um, Pixley, in the industrial area down there, a 20-acre parcel. So they're going to build a new facility down there and relocate from Goshen to uh, that area, which will be more appropriate. doesn't impact residential houses as, as their existing site, and this allows them to grow. Um, the okay, the milk thing in Tipton. The, the timing on that is um, it, the the financing that was through the EB five uh, visa program. That's that's how they were getting raising the, the funds for investment from outside the the country. That program allows people. Uh, visas if they're investing a certain amount of money into job creation and, and, and value in the U.S. Well, one of the main participants of that that was setting that up was, fell into a secure, an SEC investigation. And so that's what tied it up. It wasn't this specific project, but it was that person's uh, uh, other projects that tied this whole thing up. So it went into receivership two and a half years ago. So that's why it was just sitting empty. Um, Is that the Lac Palace building? Yes. In, yeah. Um, yeah. It was, uh, well, it was a mozzarella cheese. It was mozzarella cheese is what they were, the last thing that was doing. It. Yeah. Yeah. But they sold it to, yes, they own the company and they, they sold it. And they, they relocated to Idaho, I believe, to another facility. Uh, so that sat vacant for, and, and there was about a hundred and hundred and something jobs that were associated with that. Uh, unfortunately, so it, investigations moved slowly, but just on, on June 20th, it was sold to uh, another investor. So that now that investor, I've only talked to the attorney, haven't had any meetings with the new owner yet, but through their attorney said that they want to proceed with the same type of project that was being proposed. So hopefully we'll see some movement now and, and start to go forward on that. On another front, we the, the, the um, California Department of Food and Agriculture Dairy Digester Research and Development Program just issued, um, awarded $37 million for 20, 21 digester projects in the county. So that's huge. Uh, that, that adds on to the 11 projects that were awarded grants last year. So in total, Tulare County projects have been awarded $55 million in grants for, um, for uh, projects that total about $150 million worth. So those are moving forward. That's a big, uh, a big uh, boost for the dairy industry and, uh, and sustainability. So that, well, it's, 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 they're covering, they're, they're covering lagoons and, and capturing the, the gas piping it via pipelines to a central facility, and then there's different operations. There's, there's the Pixley, Pixley Cluster, which is going to the Pixley Biogas. That's the largest one of these projects. And they're utilizing it at the ethanol plant for their boilers, but they're also going to scrub it and put it into the Southern California gas pipeline. So they're selling it back to the utility. And ultimately, um, uh, Calgary wants to put a, um, a fuel sta uh, uh, station there too for trucks that run on that. So that's one. That's Pixley. But then there's other ones. That there's there's other clusters where there's a cluster of four or five dairies, and they have their own fleet that runs on um, compressed nat on gas, compressed natural gas. So they're going to be um, fueling their own fleet of, of vehicles. And then there's other ones that are doing. Uh, uh, 
similar things and sinking in. So there's there's a number of projects. They're not just it's not just one project and they're not individual, but they're really clustered. So all told, we've got 32 that have been awarded grants in the last eight eight months, and. Uh, Beyond that, there's probably another 10 or 12 that are moving forward, whether they get the grants or not. They're still applying for more grants. There'll be another release of funding. This is all from cap and trade. Uh, and, and so that's a, that's a, we're already a, approaching at least over 10% of the dairies now are going to have a digester associated with them. And we have over 20% of the dairies have solar uh, associated with the site. So they're really going for the renewable uh, energy. How big a decline are we in the dairy industry? I mean, I read lots and lots about it, including the Wall Street, about California losing its dairy uh, We're going through a study right now to try to uh, determine exactly where we stand as herd size, but there has been some reduction. I, I'm, I would be speculating at this point, but I'm thinking we probably have 260 dairies, 250 dairies, down from a high of 330, I believe, was the, the peak. So there has been a number, and now whether some of those herds have been relocated out of the area, some have been combined with others. So we're trying to we're trying to get that reporting to to determine whether the actual whole herd size in the county has shrunk or just been um, uh, consolidated. But I know that some have moved out of the area. And also maybe something to consider would be some of those were definitely sub. Dairies, those dairies that weren't meeting any requirements at all that were grandfathered in. So it, it's a plus right. for those to shut down. But I think the larger dairies absorbed them. Uh, it'd be interesting to find out that number. Yeah, we're, we're going through that. Jason Garcia, our chief planner that uh, works specifically um, in Permit Center, but also uh, is, is our dairy guy, uh, is going through that process right now to, to determine. Good information on that. You know, I, I'm a little concerned about the dairy industry here uh, uh, when this Sustainable Groundwater uh, Management Act is, comes into place because uh, if there's limitations on how much you can pump out of your own wells, uh, that water might be too valuable to grow row crop or feed crops. And uh, if you've got permanent plantings, um, and you're only allowed to say just 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 for instance here, uh, able to pump half of your half the water that you need to maintain that permanent planting. You're going to have to go to the fellows that are have open ground, and buy their water from them, and then that open ground stays fallow. Yeah. And then the dairyman doesn't have feed, and he's going to have to haul his feed in and haul his milk out. <clears throat> It's not going to be. It's going to be real interesting. What's going to happen if, if there's some serious regulations and limitations on what you can pump? So, so if they're producing milk, then that should be considered a repression, right? <laughs> <laughs> Things are coming back. Out. Well, it <laughs> sounds uh, good to, to me. To, Makes sense to, to me. And uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves with Sigma because we don't know what it's going to be like. Because you, going on different committees across. The county from where they have water to where they don't it's going to be different uh, everywhere you go yeah that's true you know that but the great, the great thing about the agri agricultural industries is they always find a way so it'll be it'll be interesting it, i mean as far as conser con conservation measures you know we, you look at what they do in other parts of the state as far as conservation measures that we don't necessarily do here um, are they willing to do them or not will be the big the big question so I mean we're a long ways from saying what Sigma is yet and what the enforcement mechanisms are going to be at the end of the day so <coughs> we'll see there's so much water here though we can't do that in Spain so and yeah. that's in the uh, there are we do use a lot of water, and, and, and I think they're probably talking about flood irrigation and stuff like that. The problem is that flood water is exactly what's going down. Well, and yeah, charging. again. If you're using drip, drip irrigation. We, we're just beginning to do the analysis now, and you, I bet you <coughs> what I'm seeing so far, you won't really know what the, the infiltration rates, how that affects the actual aquifer for at least five years. A lot of the stuff you're going to see right off the bat now is just going to be the, the quant, qual, qualification information we probably won't get to hard quantification for another another five years so 
I, I know everybody's afraid right now, but I, I, I do really hard pressed to say to actually tell anybody what, how much water they are going to be able to pump or not. Well, it's interesting too. The demand for dairy is down about 30 percent nationally, and it's going to continue to go down. And we can stall it off all we want, but it's on the way out. The dairy industry. Right. So I think the more conservation mitigation measures to protect the industry here in the county regulatorily will help it sustain itself. Necessarily supported as well as it might have in the past. But I did want to add to what Mike was saying. Um, as far as the valuation that was down a little bit this year, I think we're going to make up for it in a large part because of these uh, <coughs> dairies. Uh, uh, digesters and um, I think uh, we still did 600 permits for the cities Is that what Jason was saying uh, for the city building permits we, we were down a little bit for um, oh for the county versus the county. Uh, Exeter and, and Farmersville yeah I didn't look at those specific numbers but yeah yeah it's, it's it, the activity is and I've been saying this for a while because solar rooftop solar was such a huge overinflated some of the numbers and, and i've been saying you're going to look at a drop off of that and i think that's what we saw this year we last year we had issued 720 something uh solar permits out of four forty one hundred total permits so that's a large percentage this year we were right around 500 so that's a it was a big reduction about 28 percent reduction in solar permits so that's where your numbers are but when you're looking at commercial the commercial p permits and, and ag-related commercial permits are up. So that's a good sign that the, we're still moving forward. We, we approved, uh, well, the Pixley Biogas Project, two components of that, just two components of that were two and a half million dollars that we just issued building permits this, this past month for. And then there was a cold storage uh, expansion of a million and a half dollars too last month. So they're still, they're still expanding in, in that sector, but... Um, but the overall numbers, if you just look at the overall numbers, you got to kind of get below the, the tip tops of the wave to understand what's going on. I think they're building a large project, though, in is it Fresno County out by Avenel. That's going to be like 2,500 acres of solar. It's huge. Oh, a large solar? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Central solar Valley is way over. To um, go south from Avenel. And we do, we do have a potential. We've, we've had one. A uh, 70 megawatt project that's gone through PRC, we haven't yet received the actual application. Uh, so that's something that we might have, have another one coming forward down towards Terabella. Uh, we'd like it calls for, and we're, we're, I know it's gonna happen, is that uh, Southern California Edison and PG&E buying sites for uh, storage of electricity. Basically just big containers filled with batteries and uh, that's uh, that's 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 happening now we yeah we've we've already permitted in and for Alpaul um, some of the first sites that we've the large-scale solar sites that out near Alpaw uh, and the high-speed rail high-speed rail is taking a chunk of one of this kind of going right through one of the fields so they're relocating some uh, about a megawatt or a little bit more of their panels to another spot on the same same parcel but they're also looking at modifying, and they have a 10 megawatt uh, storage, battery storage. So what that will feed, they'll they'll charge it up during um, during the the night, and it will feed back into the grid during the daytime to help sustain and balance out the the main <coughs> and, and use. Kind of interesting because they're all module uh, batteries, and so it just you just plug in. And, you know, it's pretty neat. <coughs> All I got. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Washington, don't leave.